All right, let's reward ourselves with a little bit of face work. We can get back to working on his face. Let's hide everything else uh, we don't need and makes it a little bit faster or a lot faster to move around here. And uh, let's identify where we were. So we had basically pretty much primary forms, some secondary kind of feel uh, with the skeletal indications here as well as some fleshy bits. But we can definitely keep going and sharpen things up a bit. So right now we're at almost 64,000 polys. Definitely still have room to increase. So let's go ahead and do that. At this point, I'm going to subdivide twice. So let me go up to a million. And it gives us, actually, we could probably subdivide twice more after this particular stage for detailing, and um, we'd still be fine. I mean, a 16 million poly head isn't unheard of. But, um, you know, ideally, keep it between, you know, three and eight or something like that. Okay, before we proceed, let's move into like a basic material. I have one that's just basic material head. We compare the two. Basic material is standard in, in ZBrush. Uh, my basic material head just has a little bit more shine to it and just a tad less ambient response. Helps me pick up the, the um, surfaces a little better, but both of them are, are good. I mean, I like this one too, but um, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Fantastic. Let's talk about the face. And I have more reference here. Again, I don't know who the heck who this is. I've had this in my reference folder for, I mean, I gotta, like, gotta say 10 years. So I have no idea whose it is. And if anybody knows who, who it is, I will uh, attribute them, give them credit. So first of all, <clears throat> Here is, this is the face of John, John Travolta, as far as I can tell. And I just wanted to show you all what the kind of stuff we'll be doing in this particular video to the extent of what an elvish face might need. They're, you know, what we usually think of them as is pretty smooth and clean and perfect. Um, but that can also be a little boring. So I'm gonna try a little bit of this, this kind of stuff, little, little fleshiness to bring him alive. I don't think it'll hurt. So maybe not this much, but you know, kind of halfway there. And these are some examples of mouths. If I can get it to move, here we go. And I like, this is a female right here. And you can just see some nice breakdown of the planes. And I'll teach you how I lay these in here. Um, even the lip cross-section, I'm not the cross-section, but <clears throat> if you cut through it, you would see there's a bit of uh, a, a dip right here in this particular face. Most of them have more convex, uh, which means outward shapes. So a lot of, let's just draw it on there. A lot of these, um, these kind of contours, just how they come out this kind of stuff. It's really nice. I mean, obviously the chin is a bony, a bony thing there, but um, let's say like even on the, the top of the lip here and see how these kind of break down. So this is the kind of stuff we'll be doing. I enjoy it. And um, this is a bit, this is a more obvious one that's got a lot of work in it, but this is for like an older, an older face with a bit more history. So we'll avoid that one. But also back to the nose, I, I meant to show this one when we were blocking in the shapes, but you can see how the inside really breaks down primitively with the, uh, the wedges. So we have the, the nostril here on the side and we have these here. So it's not just, it wouldn't be one thing like that with a little nostril hole in it. 
there's a bit of there's a bit more subdivision in it. Uh, and even right here, there's a break with this piece here, and this is where the bone is uh, right here. So all this is, you know, tissue and um, cartilage, I guess. I'm not sure what they actually call it. Um, and you can see there are also our little landmarks with the cheekbones. So these are helpful too. So I'm going to just, we'll have one little square up here. We'll just have his face up for like as a reference, but I don't want to copy it. But yeah, we'll just keep it as a reference for now. All right, so how to do that? We'll go to our clay buildup. <clears throat> I'm going to go down to like five. Uh, we may crank it up a little bit or down, but five is usually pretty good minimum. And do the alpha six. All right, so we're going to keep this anatomically correct as, as best we can. You know, this is still what we're trying to do is create an appealing character. That's the main goal. What makes it appealing is it's believable. Is it a scientific medical diagram of exactly how these muscles are drawn out on the face? Perhaps not. We're taking a little creativity here and there, but the idea is to base it on actual anatomy the best we can. And uh, yeah, I think that is a good way of summing up. So let's start from the top down. And I'd like to get this area here just a little more blocked in here and I just just smooth it out a little bit and you have little indentations that are really nice. Yes, eventually we'll have to do some eyebrows. Maybe we'll get to that in this one. And this is when it's really helpful to, to have some sort of tablet or Cintiq, you know, and they they make cheaper ones out there. There's competition for Wacom, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that you don't have to um, use their tech, but it is pretty good. You can find used ones on the internet, eBay. Just go to a trusted site. I mean, Cintiqs are kind of difficult to mail, but I know people sell them, but they're really heavy, so there'll be heavy shipping costs. Maybe you can find one local. Maybe your employer might have one that you could. Um, get some practice, let you give you some practice on or even use at work. That'd be kind of cool. Or even just test it out, see if you even like it, you know. And if you don't like the embed of five, you can try, you know, eight. Just figure out what increment works for you. So maybe you're on a, um, maybe you're not making an elf, maybe you're making something else and you're just using this workshop to uh, help you learn some ZBrushy things uh, and you want a bit chunkier of a face hey maybe you're making a dwarf you know so there's they're a bit more fleshy uh, that would make sense so crank it up if you need to alright we can go back to our our guy too although there's not much to interpret from this particular thing. It has a nice watercolor feel to it, but I don't think it's really calling out anything specific for uh, the face design. So that's going to be up to us to really flesh it out here. All right, let's get here, here. And doing it this way also will give you a little bit of free organic feel, like it'll give you some nice texture. Yeah. 
And across this symmetry, I'll just turn off symmetry for now. Just across this uh, bridge of his nose. And let's go ahead and um, let's work on getting a proper like a look here. Bring in a little bit of asymmetry to the look. Sometimes crisscrossing is nice too, to go one direction and then follow it up with a perpendicular directional feel. I put just a little bit of this kind of crook in there, I'm gonna fill it in. So start off kind of heavy and then go back in and soften it out. It's probably still a bit too heavy. It's going to be kind of subtle. Okay. All right, let's check it out. Let's add a little more here. I think we didn't have quite enough juice with the the five power of five, so we can crank it up a little bit more. I'm gonna knock this down to like ten on my damn standard brush. Just a little more softness, so I'd have to do less work to build it back up. I use that just to separate the planes, but then I also will really go back over it with some extra strokes and then smoothing. Yeah, this is some of the most relaxing kind of work to me. Crank your tunes and your headphones and uh, go to town. Now I don't want it too strokey. I don't want a bunch of clay tubes feeling. We want to really keep the the ver uh, various surfaces that we're getting uh, pretty subtle. We don't want to have a bunch of I don't, I don't want it to look like a piece of fine art, like it's been sculpted uh, with clay just recently raked in. I mean, that's nice for studies and stuff, which is cool. But for what we're doing here, I don't really want it to be that kind of surfacing. So I'm trying not to hop around too much so it's not disorienting to you, but I will uh, do a little bit of hopping because then it helps me to not get stuck in one area. And I just try to join everything up. Give everything a meeting place. Sometimes I'll even cut in a little bit where I've got an area that is cut in. And sometimes it works, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. But I think sometimes it's worth the exploration of it.
And there's a little little chunk that goes like right here. So I'm gonna try to get that in there against this piece here. And then we can mess with this zone. Just to let you know what I'm thinking as I do this. Okie dokie. I think it looks like we're going in the right direction at least. So that's encouraging news. Just blend this in a little better. Okie dokie. About 40 minutes or something like that. Um, I honestly think this is pretty good for the level of detail we want to go with on the secondary tertiary stuff. Uh, we still have a detailing video to go where we'll add the skin detail, like the texture, pores, wrinkles, um, fine lines, scars, I don't know, stuff like that. So let's save ourselves uh, for that phase. Let's let's hold off on doing anything else in this stage here. All right, let's save that out. One last compare, and you can just see how far it got taken. And you can also play with the light and check all the different angles. Switch up the material, tone down the light uh, amount. So, pretty cool. Let's crank it back up to default. Alrighty. Let's move on to the next part.